All right. What's up, Momentum? Good to see you guys. I see you all on the balcony. What's up back there? Hey, what's up? <laughs> I see you. <laughs> Just wanted to do that. Having fun tonight. Man, what a great video. I love that. Great job. Doesn't seem right. What? It's great. Follow her on Instagram, too, by the way. What's your, what's your Instagram name? Yeah. All right, there it is. Follow her. Julia, you're awesome. Well, hey, man, what a great night. Um, we kicked off a brand new series last week. Do it yourself. Pr Pastor Pradeep and kick this off. And uh, it's just a great, great series we're in. And I'm speaking about something special, uh, how to hear God's voice tonight. And I don't know if any of you have ever had communication problems with the Lord, trying to hear God. And it can be difficult. You know, you're like, God, what, what should I do with my life? Who should I marry? Should I go to college? You know, should I get out of bed this morning? Lord, okay, no, I didn't think so. I'll take that silence as just hit the snooze one more time. It's cool. And you can have communication problems. And uh, I was thinking about this during worship. Um, a story came to my mind. I think it was, it was earlier tonight, maybe during worship. And uh, Pastor Pradeep and I, when we were young, we would mess with people and their communication. All right? And what we would do is, back in high school, <laughs> we would do that. We would get on the phone with each other, and we would then three-way call s people. All right. So we, I would put him. I would put him on a hold, and I would three-way call someone, and then he would do the same thing to me. So we're actually four-way calling. Yeah, <laughs> just blew your mind right there. Four-way calling, and. We would do, like, the weirdest random combos. Like, we would do my mom with the youth pastor. <laughs> and just, and then, they like, we would star six, seven or whatever, block our numbers. So they didn't know, you know, who's calling. And they're just, hello? Hello? Hey. Hey. What's going on? It was just, like, weird communication. And then if things got, kind of got silent, we would just, like, do uh, bird noises in the background. We'd be like, Baka! They're like, what the heck is going on right now? And then I think we did, like, um, did we do Meredith? <laughs> yeah, we did uh, this girl with the youth pastor, and they had a falling out. She left the church. Left the church. <laughs> and we would just call them and just make them, like, have this conversation. They're like, hey, so, you know, why are you calling me? Why are you calling, are you calling me? You know, it's just, it, you know, weird communication is happening. And, uh. And I'm talking about hearing God's voice, and maybe you've had difficult times communicating with God and, and stuff. And I, I want to show you this video before I really dive into the rest of the message, but um, we have Maddie Montgomery coming here in three weeks. Come on, baby. That's going to be sweet. I'm excited about that. When he comes, I, I got to refresh and actually learn some of the songs. I'm watching these YouTube videos of him and his band, and it's just awesome. But I'm starting to know more songs, and I want to go to a Maddie Montgomery concert really bad. It'd be awesome. I'd love it. Do the Wall of Death or whatever it's called. And, uh, and, but we got this, this, um, this video, and it's, it talks a little bit about death metal, but there was a communication problem, um, and uh, this guy didn't exactly know how to spell the word death. He didn't understand what it, what it really was. So you'll understand this. Let's play this video right now. Inget F, alltså. Nej, inte något F, nej. Okej. Hej då. Yes. Vi awesome. Death, death metal. <laughs> I was in a dark place on the internet. Jordan Lucado helped me find that. Thank you. 
<laughs> death metal, communication problems. I actually know a guy who got, like, you know, one of those Greek tattoos on his arm, hoping it said, like, some cool word, like, love, or, you know, whatever. And uh, it, they spelt it wrong. And he, so he didn't know, and, like, someone came up to him and was like, dude, that's not what that means, you know, and he's like, what? And then he had it changed into, like, his grandpa's name and, you know, whatever. And uh, communication problems. All right. So we're just having a little fun. But let's check out what the Bible says about hearing God's voice. Uh, it can be difficult. And, uh, and if, especially if you don't know what it sounds like and you can't recognize it. So let's check out. A guy in the Bible who Devin actually spoke on tonight. Man, Devin, where you at, bro? Amazing job. <laughs> Scanning the crowd. There he is. Up in the balcony in the cheap seats. Love it. Great job tonight. Uh, just love the word, love the singing. And uh, But he spoke on this guy, Samuel, who anointed the king. And uh, Samuel was a prophet. He was the leader in Israel, but he wasn't always that way. And... Uh, before, uh, he just he was a little boy. He grew up in the temple of, of God, actually. His mom dedicated him and just let him grow up in the temple. <laughs> cool story. Yeah. She, was, she couldn't have a baby, and she said, she cried out to God, you know, God, if you give me a baby, I'll dedicate him. And she did, and she just gave him to the priest and let him grow up in the temple. And every year, she would visit and bring him some new clothes. But that's the guy we're talking about tonight. So let's check out 1 Samuel chapter 3. And uh, we'll read this. If you guys got your notes, take out, take out your phones, and you can take notes. Or if you got a journal, a piece of pen, paper and pen. All right, verse 1. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. One night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord. Just a little boy lives in the house of the Lord. And it says where the ark of God was. Verse 4, then the Lord called Samuel. Check this out. The Lord called Samuel. And this is what Samuel did. He runs, here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, here I am, you called me. And uh, Eli I don't know if he was annoyed. He's like, dude, I'm trying to sleep. I did not call you. And he says, Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. Again, the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli. He said, here I am. You called me. I might be getting annoyed by this time. He'd be like, dude, I am not calling you. <laughs> what did you eat for dinner? What is happening? You know? And, uh, he said, my son Eli said, I did not call, go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. And it's interesting. He didn't really know the Lord, but God was speaking to him. He grew up in God's house and yet did not know the Lord. Maybe that's, you know, that could be one of us. Grew up in the church, but we really didn't know God, didn't know God's voice. And so a third time the Lord called, in verse 8, Samuel. And Samuel got up, went to Eli and said, here I am, you called me. Then Eli Check this out. Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. And so Eli told Samuel, go and lie down, and if he calls you, say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there calling out, as, as at the other time, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, speak, for your servant is listening. And the Lord said to Samuel, see, I'm about to do something in Israel that will make the ears of everyone who hears about it tingle. And he goes on and talks and, and says some more stuff to Samuel. But let's pray, and we'll dive into the rest of this message. Dear Father, I thank you, Lord, for this night. I thank you for this series, Do It Yourself, Lord. I pray that we would learn to hear your voice, Father God. I pray that even tonight, God, we would hear your voice. God, that we would hear you speak to us, and we would sense your presence, Father God, in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. Amen. The first point I want to talk about tonight, and this is really the, one, the major point I'm going to spend the majority of the message on, th is this. Point number one, you got to recognize. Everyone say, you got to recognize. Turn to your neighbor and say, you better recognize. Come on. All right. 
Um, when, uh, you know what, my mom, believe it or not, my very own flesh and blood, if you can believe this, my mom cannot recognize my voice between me and Pradeepin, all right? Growing up, we would just play this trick. We grew up in Minnesota together, and if she would call, I'd be like, hey, bro, answer the phone. And he'd be like, hi, mom. And she'd be like talking to me, hey, how you doing? And he's like, oh, I'm doing good. Uh, coming home later. And then finally, she'd be like, wait a minute. Is this Ben? Oh, yeah, it's Ben. She, okay, you know, and we would trick her. <laughs> we would put her on speakerphone, and she'd be like, no, this is pretty Ben. And it, she would not recognize our voice. I'm like, Mom, you gave birth to me. How do you not know my voice? <laughs> and, and uh, but she would just, and so we've done this many times, and, and it's always funny. And um, you, but you got to learn to recognize God's voice. And I'm going to talk about how God speaks to us so we can recognize when God is speaking to us. But I tell you what, if if the president of the United States called me right now or sometime today or sometime this week, I would not pick it up. And I'll tell you why. It's not because it's not for any other reason except for this. I don't recognize his phone number, all right? Is anyone else like me? If you don't recognize a phone number, I'm not answering the phone, all right? Anyone? Yeah, you're like, uh, it's unknown, it's a block call, heck no, all right? Definitely, you know, okay, it says, uh, it says they're from Flint, Michigan. They're just going to have to leave a message because I, I don't know. I don't, it's not how it used to be like 10 years ago. If you get a phone call, you're like, yeah, you know, when you get a first. But now it's just like, dude, text me or just leave a message or I'll get back. And then probably 50% of the time, if I do have their number, I still, <laughs> I still, I just look at them like, I just don't want to answer the phone, you know, just, it happened today. Someone called, it was a, you know, it was actually, it was this um, Christian Life School of Theology, <laughs> the school that our, our interns take classes from. They called me. I just looked at it. I was like, oh, I just don't know. I don't want to answer. Just leave a message. I'll, I'll get back to you later. All right. Okay, I'm bad at that. And uh, if the president calls, I'm not answering the phone because I don't have his number. I don't recognize it. But if he leaves a message, I'd be bummed that I missed the call. I truly would be. Someone's <laughs> what's happening right now? <laughs> Thank you. Hey. Hello? Hello? Oh, <laughs> Pastor Lucas. <laughs> what's up? Someone's calling me. All right, I answered. I answered. <laughs> Next time, though. One out, two. All right. And so if the president says, Ben Block, I'm the president. I can't believe you missed my phone call. I'd be really bummed. But if he was like, I'm calling back tomorrow, I would not miss that phone call. And even if it said block number again, or, you know, if I, I would just pick it up. Like, I just assume it's the president, you know. And I would, I would learn to recognize that, hey, the president's calling. He's the same number he called. He used yesterday. I'm going to pick it up. And, and so um, we can learn to recognize when God is speaking to us. God can speak anywhere, anytime, through anything. You can tweet that if you want. <laughs> you can write that down. God can speak anytime, anywhere, through anything. The Bible says that God used a donkey one time to speak. And this guy responded back to the donkey. All right? You, if you are hearing a donkey speak, you think you are crazy. And he is talking back to this donkey and having a conversation. But God used a donkey. God can use, you know, he can use the walls to bring revelation to me. All right? He can use it. He, I don't think the walls are going to speak to me. But he can just bring revelation through anything, anytime, anywhere. If you're in the club and you're not supposed to be there, the Holy Spirit can speak to you and convict you and say, man, you need to get out of there, you're partying, it's not, this isn't good. He can speak to you in church, he can speak to you whenever, wherever, at any time, through anything, even when you sleep. Even when you sleep, we'll, we'll talk about that, all right? Um, if, I, if I have my phone here, <laughs> I can talk, I can communicate with, with just, you know, if I have your number, all right, let's say um, Pastor Luke called me, and uh, I could call him back. I could write him a text message. There's an app called Viber. 
I don't know if you know that. I could internationally, I could talk to him for free. I could send him text messages for free. I could Skype him. There's so many ways I could communicate with Pastor Luke. I could even, I could FaceTime him. I'm just gonna. I could AOL Instant Messenger him. Come on now. I could record a tape or video and send it to him. I could write him a letter. I mean, I could. I could communicate just by my nonverbal cues. I, I couldn't, I'm not even speaking anything, but I can communicate to him, all right? And there's so many different ways. Um, there's a, a, an app called WhatsApp. Anyone know what WhatsApp? <laughs> all right. We got some WhatsApp. All right. <laughs> I can communicate to you through that. Just so many ways. You know, I could Facebook you. I could poke you. You know, I could do whatever. And just like that, there's so many ways that God can speak to us. And I wrote out seven, but there's a way more. But there's seven ways that I feel like, especially that God speaks to me, all right? And so we're going to talk about these tonight, and then I want to give everyone a chance to hear God speak speak to you tonight. During the, the last song of worship, I just want us to take some time and hear God speak to us through that, all right, And uh, tonight. So here's the first one. Seven ways God communicates with us. The first one is a still, small voice. Still, small voice. And, uh, and what I mean is, man, just in my mind, I just hear, I hear, I can just hear God. It's not audible, like you can hear me right now, but I just, God is speaking to me, all right? Just in my mind, and I can hear him speak. And uh, he'll just, it, it, and this is what it looks like. It often looks like one word, or like a phrase, or a, maybe a sentence, but it's not like, Hey, good morning, Ben. You know, the weather's going to be great today. Make sure you bring a, uh, you know, wear shorts. And, uh, you know, he's not, like, going off. He's just, like, you know, he'll just say one word or a sentence or a phrase oftentimes. And he doesn't speak to me in, like, paragraphs and, 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 and pages and pages of stuff. But I sense God speak to me in maybe just one phrase. And so here's a phrase. Um, I was praying over... I'll just really quick tell you the story. Many, some of you may have heard it, but I was trying to pray for three people a day, all right, one summer until I went back to college. And long story short, I went up to four girls, and I asked, I said, hey, can I pray for you? Not weird at all. Just some random public area, <laughs> see four ladies. I'm driving. I'm like, Woo! pull in, excuse, get out of the car, walk up to four girls. Hello. Can I pray for you? Um, they start laughing. That's cute, you know. And they're like, no, you can't pray for me. I was like, what? Just let me pray for you. I pray. I'll just start praying. No, I didn't. <laughs> you can't stop me. Lord, bless these ladies, you know. <laughs> I'm praying for you. No, stop. No, and so I just, I just said, okay, fine. And then two other girls came out of this building. Perfect. Walked up to them. Hey, I'm trying to pray for three people today. You two look like the perfect candidates. Can I pray for you? They're like, oh, that's cute. But no, no thanks. We don't need any prayer. I was like, what? Fine. You know, rejected by six girls in one day, in like five minutes. I get back in my car, and, and I just hear this, this phrase comes to mind. You know, are you going to quit? Are you going to quit? And it was just like, whoa, where did that come from? I just recognized that was God speaking to me. Am I going to give up? You know, rejected by six girls? Am I going to just throw it all away after that? Or am I going to keep going? You know, keep praying for people. Keep staying encouraged. Are you going to quit? That's what it looks like a lot of times when God speaks to me. Another time, he, um, he talked to me about coming to Cornerstone. All right, so that was, that, any, God can speak anytime, anywhere, through anything. And I was in my car, maybe feeling discouraged, being rejected, and God just spoke. Boom. Um, Another time, I was, I was praying about coming to Cornerstone. This was like four years, three and a half, four years ago. And I was at the altar, and I was praying, God, should I go? And I just heard one word, go. Boom, go. And then uh, I told Debbie, I said, God spoke to me about going to Cornerstone. He, she said, what, what did he say? I said, I want God to speak to you. I, I can't tell you. And so she's like, she prayed about it. And next day, she's like, God, you spoke to Ben. I want you to speak to me too. And he said the same word, go. 
And then she came, and we talked, and we're like, what did God say to you? And he said, go. Oh, he said, go to me too. Boom, praise God. And it was like God confirmed it. And uh, it was just God speaking to me. It wasn't like go and just all, all this other stuff is just one word, you know. And that's how God speaks to me oftentimes. I want to bring Josh Martin up here. I asked him to share a story. Give it up for Joshua Aaron Martin. And uh, he's one of our awesome interns, loving it, and God spoke to him. And uh, I just want him to share real quick what that looked like. Yeah, so uh, the real quick side of the story, one of the uh, internship uh, main goals is to find purpose. We're trying to, like, find out what we're doing with our lives and what we're going to be doing. And, uh, you know, God kind of uh, God kind of had this theme in my life that's just keep walking, just keep going, just keep moving. And uh, I, I think I was crying out for the longest time. I was like, God, I don't know what my purpose is. Like, what am I doing with my life? And he kept saying, you know, just keep walking, just keep going. You're right where I need you. You know, um, just small phrases like that. Um, just keep going. And uh, I was kind of, you know, I was a little like, all right, God, like seriously, like where am I going? What am I doing with my life? Like, tell me. And he's just like, just keep walking. And I remember there was a there was one time where I was doing my devotions and I was like in my bed and I was like all sleepy and I was like, all right, God, like I'm super frustrated. Like, come on, like seriously, like tell me, what am I doing with my life? And I heard the uh, he spoke scripture to me. He was just like John five eight. And I'm like, that's that's really weird. Like, why would you say John five eight? And I, I pull it up, and it the f- the actual verse is, and Jesus said to him, "Get up, take your bed, and walk." And I uh, <laughs> I realized that was like a oh oh <laughs> wow. It wasn't until like I actually saw it on the page that I saw that I realized you know like he wanted me where I was, and I was walking where he wanted me to be, but it took me to actually, like, see it, to actually realize, like, he'd been speaking to me the whole time, and I just didn't recognize his voice. I was just kind of putting it off to the side, and didn't realize that was the actual direction he had for me. I didn't need to know. He just wanted me to keep walking, and, you know, that was it. Great job. Just, God will speak to you just like that. You know, God, what a... What do you want me to do? John 5, 8. Okay? What is that? And he looked it up. Grab your mat. Get up and just keep walking. I love it. I love it. Um, I want to talk about one more quick story, and then I'll move on. There's a professor of mine at Oral Roberts University. His name was Dr. Lewandowski. He was Polish. And uh, any Polish people? I got a little Polish in me. Thank you. I know, Jordan. I know you're Polish. Okay, girl. Okay, I see those hands. All right. And, uh. Dr. Lewandowski, he's, he was talking about the Holy Spirit speaking to us. And tell me if I'm wrong, but most of us have five senses, all right? We've got five senses. And uh, the Holy Spirit inside of us, though, is like the trump card sense. Because we can see things, we can hear things, okay, this looks good. But maybe the Holy Spirit inside of us is speaking to us and trumps all of our other senses, all right? And he t- told this story. He, bi- he's a businessman. Dr. Lewandowski, he was a professor at this college, and he said he was going to um, get into this business deal and, like, buy a used car dealership. And as he's walking in the office, he hears, don't walk, run. Don't walk, run. Run from, and, and just run from this business deal. Get out. Don't do it. And he says, he signed the papers, and he did it anyways. And then I think right at around that time after that, um, like 2008 or whatever, the economy crashed, and he said it was a six-figure loss for him. Hundred, that's 100000 at plus. And $100,000 he at least he lost because he didn't listen to the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is our trump card. You're like, man, this looks good. I'm just going to do it, God. I know you say no, but... I got a good perspective here. This looks great. But the Holy Spirit, he has a better perspective. He knows, he knows what's going to happen. And, he, and God spoke to him, don't walk, run. And he disobeyed. And, and I tell you what, um, you know, just like Samuel heard God speak, but he thought it was Eli. And, he, and he, he didn't quite recognize it. You know what? The Lord is gracious enough to not just, you know, say, Samuel, you blew it. You didn't hear me. Hello, I'm the Lord. Can't you tell? No, he said, he called him again, Samuel. And then he did it a third time. And then he did it a fourth time. 
And the Holy Spirit, and the Lord is gracious enough to keep, keep talking to us until we can recognize it. And we can learn to hear his voice and, and obey him. All right? His plans are way better th- than, than our plans are for our lives. And so he wants to communicate. All right? The, that's the first thing. Still small voice. The second thing is dreams. All right? Dreams. I had a dream once, and um, uh, I was just, I had, in my dream, I was in a, a dump, a just garbage dump. And I had these two bags, which were my trash, and there was a dumpster, and I was going to try and carry these, but I didn't want to deal with it. And in my dream, my dad was there, and he helps grab these bags, and he walks with me, and he throws them in the dumpster. And I woke up, and I just, I felt like that was God speaking to me, that there was some trash in my life, and my dad was going to help me deal with it. And so later that night, I called my dad, and he helped me. It was just, boom. God just sovereignly gave me a dream and spoke that to me, and he helped me. And so that's one way. Uh, that God will speak to you to you is through your dreams. Not all your dreams are from the Lord. Amen. All right. Um, <laughs> could just be the pizza you had last night or you know whatever. And uh, don't don't always do everything or just read into your dreams too much. But sometimes the Holy Spirit will use a dream and speak to you through that. All right. The next thing, real quick, and, and I'm just throwing these out so you can recognize, man. I had a dream. This seems a little odd. Maybe, uh, maybe it's God speaking to me. All right. The next thing is this: your Bible. Your Bible is a fantastic way to hear from God. But um, le- let me tell you this: Dr. Cottle, who's spoken here many times, he teaches lots of classes to our interns. Um, Dr. Ronald Cottle is the man, and and uh, he came and spoke at our church. And I got to drive him, pick him up from the hotel, take him to the airport. Stuff like that, and and during those times, I try and ask these guys, you know, tons of questions, and just learn and glean from them. And so I asked, I said, you know, how much time do you spend reading your Bible every day? And he said, I read until it speaks to me. I read until it speaks to me because check this out, Pastor Pradeepin. <laughs> Pastor Pradeepin challenged us to read through Matthew last week. Any of you guys doing that? You remember that challenge? Come on, awesome. And so uh, one of these days, a uh, couple days, I think it was Sunday night, and I was, or Monday night, I, don't, I forget. And I was in my chair, and I was thinking, okay, I haven't read Matthew 5 today, and I need to read it, but I really wanted to read my Kindle, all right? This is just a battle going on, all right? Whew. And there's these books on my Kindle. I was like, I want to get into this. I want to read, you know, and... and but I was like, okay, I'm going to read the Bible first. And so I don't know if you've ever done this, but I was just like power read through chapter 5. And, I mean, I couldn't hardly remember anything. It was like nothing spoke to me. And I just kind of felt in my spirit like, dude, I need to go back and I need to slow down and read this again. And, and if I would just move on, I feel like, you know, I, I was like not being obedient to the Lord. And so I just went back and I started focusing on the Scripture. And it Things were jumping off left and right. It was just like rereading, slowing down, asking God. A lot of times when I read the Bible, I say, God, speak to me. You know, help me to hide your word in my heart so I don't sin against you. You know, that's a, a scripture I just quote all the time when I read my Bible. It's God, speak to me. And so I slow down, and at the end of chapter 5, this verse, love your enemies, jumped up at me. And I realized I'm preaching a message at the switch, which all of you guys need to come to, in the afternoon message, I'm talking about loving your enemies. And it's like, boom, here it is. And it just jumped off at me. And so that's the verse I'm going to use. It's like God just spoke to me. It's just coming alive and it's speaking to me. And I tell you what, I can spend 20 minutes reading one chapter of the Bible, Proverbs especially. There's all these like golden nuggets. I can also take like 30 seconds and read a chapter. But when I, I slow down, and Pr- Pastor Pretty even taught us this method last week, the SOAP method. And I'll just real quick reiterate the SOAP method. SOAP stands for scripture, observation, application, and then prayer. And so when you're reading the Bible, you know, slow down and, and let it speak to you. And maybe it just, boom, first verse is like, whoa, just fresh revelation. Or maybe it takes, you know, a little bit. But Dr. Carly said, I read until it speaks to me. And God's word is alive. And it'll speak right into your situation. And uh, scripture So you're reading scripture, observation, you're observing it, 
You're applying it. How does this apply? And then pray. Pray about it. God, help me to apply this to my life. It says to forgive my enemies. It says to love my enemies and uh, forgive. But my parents have hurt me so bad. It's so difficult. And ma- you can just apply it and pray about it, and God will give you grace. All right? So that's, an, that's the third way that God speaks to you is through the Bible, through the Bible. And there's just incredible things. And you know what? Maybe... Maybe you, you read something in the Bible and you don't quite understand everything. I am there with you, totally. I don't understand everything in the Bible. But God, every time I read, you know, I can read the same chapter ten times and every time get something new and something fresh. And God can speak to me and I learn and maybe a year goes by and I read it again and it's like it's starting to make sense. And so just keep reading the Bible. I encourage you every single day. All right, the next thing. The next way I feel like God speaks to me is just with a thought, an idea, all right? And uh, for this, this, I have an illustration. When I was, it was like my breaking point between Debbie and I, all right? And uh, we weren't dating at the time, and I wanted to date her. I wanted to pursue her, but I had asked her dad twice to pursue her, and he had just shut me down. Thank you for that laughter. Yeah. Thank you. you know my pain, you know, I'm like pursuing her with everything I've got, and her dad just showed me in town, and uh, they're actually at my house right now, <laughs> they just drove in, and uh, I love my in-laws, they're awesome, but he had shut me down, because he didn't feel like it was the right thing, it wasn't God or whatever, thought we were going a different direction, and I w- still was in love with her, and, uh, and so I just, this one day, it was like, make or break, I need to get the blessing. I need to, like, make this happen or I'm, like, done. I got to move on. And so I call. I talked to Debbie. I said, hey, can I have your dad's number? And I called him. And that very day, he says, we just flew in from South Africa, and we just prayed about it, and you guys have a blessing. We feel peace about it. Go ahead. Start dating. And I look back, and I'm like, dude, that was not a coincidence. That was like a God thing that like, if, uh, that idea was in my mind, I feel like, and it was just a divine, miraculous timing. And so God will give you uh, th- uh, thoughts, ideas, maybe an idea, uh, an incredible business to start that you're going to make millions and advance God's kingdom, and it's just going to be awesome. He will give you these ideas. Maybe it's a, a song idea, all right? Maybe, you know, you're praying, and God just gives, gives you lyrics, and he'll give you ideas and, and things like that. And it'll just a thought will come to mind. You'll recognize that was, I wasn't even thinking about that, but it came to mind. That was God. And you'll just start recognizing it. And you can just give God the glory for it, all right? Um, uh, I might be driving home and just a thought comes to mind. Buy Debbie flowers. You're in the doghouse. You need to do this. You're like, what? God, how'd you, what? I'm in the doghouse. <laughs> well, okay. It's just a thought comes to mind. All right, I'm not in the doghouse, but just buy flowers, you know? And uh, just um, back up, just in case, you know. And so uh, that thought will just come to mind. Just, okay, God, that's you, you know. And I'll do it. Hopefully I'll do it. Um, other, okay, next thing, I'll just talk about these three things real quick. Next thing is other people. God can speak to you through other people, all right. Um, for instance, a pastor, okay. We pray about these messages, and we, we try and hear from God about what to speak. And we believe it's a direct message for you guys. And so w- God can speak through us about, about what you need to hear. And uh, in so many ways, um, I've been so blessed by pastor's message, by, by other people preaching, and just feeling like, man, that was a word for me. I needed to hear that. That was like, that was a God thing. And so that's w- another way. All right? And then the last two are you can have a, f- and let me read you this, God can communicate without even speaking. The other night, we were, I was lying in bed with my wife, and she says, Ben, what's wrong? I was like, what are you talking about, girl? Nothing's wrong. You know, I'm trying to hide it, but inside, I was actually secretly mad. I hadn't talked to her about it. I didn't tell her. I'm like, oh, I'm so upset. I actually forget what it is about. And uh, she's like, you know, is something wrong? You know, like, you know, she doesn't. And, like, and when someone asks you that and you're mad, you can get even madder. You're like, no. I'm not mad. I'm not upset. But I was. And I didn't have to say to her that I was upset. She just knew. And God can communicate to you without even speaking. And how he does that is a lot of times he'll give you a peace about a circumstance. 
or he'll give you maybe a, a check in your heart, a red flag, an uneasiness. And um, or so that's just, w- w- you know, maybe you're thinking about buying a car or a house, and you just, you just inside you feel like, man, you're anxious, you get a red flag, a check, you're like, this is not a good idea. All right, maybe that's the, that's the Lord just speaking to you. Or maybe you're praying about something, you don't really hear God's voice, but you just feel a peace about it, total peace, all right? When you're marrying, when you're about to get married, and you're like praying, you know, should I marry this person? And if you just feel anxious and red flags all over, it's probably God saying, hey, this isn't a good, a good idea. Hopefully you have peace, you know? Should I move forward, make this lifelong commitment? Peace, that's a good sign, all right? And, uh, uh, man, so many things I want to share with you, but we're going to close right now. We're going to close. Band, you guys can come back up. And uh, I just want to, I want us to really spend some time listening to God. So what we're going to do is, can you put up that last last uh, picture? And my Point number two is, are you listening? Are you listening? The first point was, you got to recognize God's voice. I just told seven ways that God speaks. And point number two is, are you listening? And check this out. In 1 Samuel 3, we read it earlier, the Lord came and stood there calling as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And this is what Samuel said. He said, speak for your servant is listening. And the Lord said to Samuel, see, I'm about to do something in Israel that will make the ears of everyone who hears about it tingle. And God, God spoke because he was listening. And so what we're going to do is we're going to have the band play and, and worship this last song. But what I really want us to do is open the altars here again and just talk, talk to God. Maybe you have questions. Maybe you have a question about the direction you, you want to go in life. And, uh, you know, maybe you have some, some, some things you need to bring before the Lord. I know I do. I'm, I'm seeking God to answer me in, in a specific area. And so what we're going to do is just, I want us to just listen. And I believe that God is going to speak to us tonight. Is there anyone who wants to hear from God tonight? You say, yes, I need to hear from God. Awesome. What we're going to do is we're going to have the band play. The altars are open. You can come before the Lord and just tell, tell God, ask God to speak to you. Maybe something specific. Maybe it's just you say, God, I love you. I want to hear you say, I love you back. You know, I do that sometimes. I just want to hear God say, I love you to me. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to take a few minutes. And I want everyone to just listen tonight and hear God's voice for themselves. So let's worship. Why don't we all stand? The altars are definitely open if you want to come. There it is. God gave us two ears and one mouth. And so let's just have, open our ears and let's just listen to the Lord tonight. Father, we pray that you would speak to us. God, even as we worship, God, I pray that you would touch our hearts. Speak to us, Father God. People are wanting to know direction and purpose in their life, Father God. And I pray that you would touch touch us and speak to us, God. In Jesus' name, amen.